Nitrogen pollution poses one of the most serious challenges to the environment, and yet, remarkably, it doesn't have a high profile with uh, the public at large. Nitrogen, of course, is vital for all living organisms, but we have doubled the availability of reactive nitrogen since the Industrial Revolution. Of course, it's come with huge social and economic benefits. For example, the use of nitrogen fertilizers and crops that naturally fix nitrogen has enabled us to dramatically increase our agricultural production. Half the food eaten today is using fertilizers with nitrogen in them. And of course, there are many industrial uses for nitrogen as well. But this massive mobilization of reactive nitrogen is starting to have serious and far-reaching impacts on the environment that have been overlooked. The good news is that we're not starting completely from scratch. Uh, nitrogen management is uh, an integral part of environmental policies in quite a lot of countries. The bad news, however, is that notwithstanding that, nitrogen pollution is in many cases getting worse, which suggests that we don't have the right policies in place. Nitrogen is a major challenge to us. Political agreements since 1990 have substantially reduced nitrogen oxide emissions from the European part of our region. But we still see critical loads of nitrogen deposition being exceeded in large parts, and we see no evidence of ecosystems recovering where the deposition has been reduced. We do not know how long it takes for ecosystems to respond. So it is clear that current commitments under our protocols is not enough to hamper further accumulation of nitrogen in the ecosystems. That depends on where the pollution is taking place and the form it takes. And that means distinguishing between local and global impacts. Local nitrogen pollution hotspots will require a cap. They'll actually require a reduction below the current level if we are going to avoid permanently damaging ecosystems. There are limits to the amount of nitrogen that local catchments can absorb without causing permanent harm. When it comes to the global level, we're talking about the climate change implications of nitrous oxide. The Paris Agreement on Climate Change sets a global temperature target, but it doesn't set an individual reduction target for each of the greenhouse gases. That's been left up to countries to do. Countries can't ignore nitrous oxide uh, in their climate response. We need to monitor and report progress on tackling nitrogen pollution at the national uh, level. According to the last protocol, the Gothenburg Protocol, parties have committed to establish national nitrogen budgets. And these nitrogen budgets serve multiple purposes. They serve to estimate the excess of nitrogen in the economy and thus inform policymakers. They also give information on where to focus action and they also monitor the effects of policies and measures. They serve to do inter-country comparisons and they also identify knowledge gaps and help thus further research. A headline indicator like this could provide an early warning of whether policies really are reducing the amount of nitrogen pollution or whether they're simply moving that pollution from one location to another.